home alone. Admit His Excellency the Governor of the Commonwealth, Charles D. Baker. We've led the nation on our efforts to tackle an opioid crisis that has terrorized too many families across this Commonwealth and this nation. We must continue to modernize our aging transportation infrastructure, finding innovative approaches to increase mobility and connecting more people to places efficiently. And we must continue to make our state government and our communities more resilient, recognizing the effects of climate change, assessing vulnerabilities, and preparing our infrastructure so that future generations may continue to prosper here. And we will achieve these goals because we must by building on the foundation of partnership and progress that we've established together over these last four years. Because this is who we are, and this is the Massachusetts way. As we approach the third decade of the 21st century, we're engaged in a number of difficult policy issues. Some will be with us all long after our time on Beacon Hill is done. But it's incumbent on us to pursue these tasks with foresight, intelligence, and commitment so that we can rest assured that when our time is done, those who come after us will be able to build on the foundation that we've established. By putting the public interest ahead of partisan politics, we've made our Commonwealth a better place to live for our residents, but there's always more left to do. When it comes to the difference in performance between urban and suburban school districts, we can and we must do better. The foundation formula needs to be updated, and we'll propose updates when we file our budget later this month. The progress here is not just about money. Our budget will also include opportunities for underperforming school districts to invest jointly with the Department of Education in proven best practices like acceleration academies, professional development programs, after school enrichment initiatives, and leadership development programs. On opioid addiction, as the Lieutenant Governor said, we've made great progress. But we didn't get into this crisis overnight, and we won't get out of it overnight either. The members of this legislature have been true partners on this issue, enacting two major bills that build on our four pillars of reform, prevention, education, treatment, and recovery. And it was not all that long ago when families, providers, and first responders had virtually no hope. Today. We're one of a handful of states that can say that overdose deaths have dropped since 2017. Now, on the afternoon of September 13th, a series of explosions rocked Greater Lawrence, resulting in one of the biggest disasters in the history of the Merrimack Valley. Dozens of house fires broke out across the region, and one young man tragically lost his life. Throughout this ordeal, homeowners, families, and businesses affected by this disaster showed a tremendous amount of patience, resilience, flexibility, and fortitude. There were hundreds of local officials and elected officials who went above and beyond the call on this one. Each day, the wheels turn. And when they turn well, they build strong communities, support great schools, grow the economy, clean up the environment, promote justice, and give people a chance. Those wheels create hope, opportunity, and possibility from one end of Massachusetts to the other. This state is bursting with talent, humor, and decency, boldness and common sense. Our abiding sense of patriotism, belonging, and community has made us strong and has carried us forward for almost 400 years. Let others engage in the cheap shots and the low bows, blows. Let's make our brand of politics positive and optimistic instead of cruel and dark. And instead of the bickering and the name calling that dominates much of today's public debate, let's build on the work of those who came before us and make our work about how we can make this state better for the people who call this glorious place home.